What is going on, guys? Hey, how's it going? <laughs> we are going to be talking about two albums today. We're going to put them in the hell in the cell and see which album comes out better than the other, basically. So we got today, we are going to be talking about the band, the London Choir Boys, the Choir Boys, the Queer Boys, whichever name you subscribe to is basically who we're going to be talking about. And we're going to be talking about their debut album and their sophomore album. And that is going to be a bit of what you fancy from 1990. And then also we got Bittersweet and Twisted from 1993. So, hey, real quick, uh, the London Choir Boys are from Newcastle, you know, obviously from London. And definitely it has that feel to their music. And uh, Spike has this raspy rough voice to him and i mean it a little bit more of a raspier like rod stewart but it is in that vein uh the music especially the first two albums are in that vein of a rod stewart feel like the faces 70s early 80s rods very early 80s rod stewart and uh, but yeah just really good stuff all the way around one of my favorite bands of all time certainly a top five top ten band is the choir boys for me so this was interesting for me to do. And, you know, as time goes on, I have a clear cut number one out of these two albums anyway for the London Choir Boys. And but let, let's just jump in here with the debut and talk about this one here a little bit. So this one here does break onto the scene, does have the single seven o'clock, which is one, a great party song. And it just kicks. It, it's it's the lead off track. It, but it certainly gives you the perfect taste of what this album is about and what the album is going to be. You know, drinking, partying, all the whole nine yards. Hell yes. I will say uh, when I was young, I guess because my dad introduced me to uh, the, the London Choir Boys because he had this album. And so I was roughly around 13 or so when I said, hey, Give me some more bands, you know, that you grew up with or whatever that you liked. And he was always a big fan of Rod Stewart. So he naturally gravitated to the choir boys when they came out, when he heard them on MTV and such. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll buy it now too, you know, so see what I think of it. Sure. I liked a couple songs off of it, but at the time you got to think I was like 13, 14 high school. I was more into the heavier stuff, heavier side of hair metal, thrash metal, power metal you know i just like that a little bit heavier stuff and there was some variety here with the choir boys you know i i feel like they sneak horns in here uh, certainly on the first two albums here different string in st like string instruments sitars and shit like that like it's just a different feel and pace compared to your traditional hair metal album but i mean yes they do have kind of that look which i will show you guys picture of them but at the same time they're a little bit more on the sleazier bluesier look to them and even kind of feel than say compared to a poison or bon jovi you know shit like that uh your typical hair metal people that you think or bands that you think about but nonetheless they get lumped in here with the hair metal stuff so that is where we are going to be talking to them and so with this album, it did reach gold in England, and it reached like 110 in the U.S. Billboard charts, and over in England, it went all the way up to number two, and that like that's really good for England because obviously, you know, Rod Stewart, like you had a lot of people that they had to beat to get to that number two spot. So definitely, I will say, great band all the way around, and Spike, he is the man. Like I always enjoyed Spike's like voice but also like the character or the uh persona he plays the rock star that he plays like you know <laughs> me and my dad always have an inside or like a joke that hey you know every time we see spike like live or you know like on youtube live like at a show he's always talking about having a drink and you know just, he just always seems like he's buzzed up which is funny as hell and like just cool you know there's not, like he he lives the uh rock star life kind of but in a somewhat classy way, you know, I don't know if that's like the charm of it. We are not role models for your life. Because I well, like when I was younger, I was like, you know, like I can't really dress or want to dress all the time as like 
Night Song Cinderella or like bands like that, you know, like just going out for the weekend or whatever. And so I, I met in the middle with the choir boys because like I still have vests to this day, like what they wear, still have I still wear it like on the weekends, you know, because like yeah, it's to wear like they're not sloppy. They're not like classless looking like you see with like the rest of the sleeves and hair metal stuff. Like, so like you won't get kicked out of a nice bar, you know, cause if you go to a nice bar, you're, they're not going to, you're not going to be sticking out like a sore thumb. It's like, Oh yeah. He at least tried. It has a little bit of cool coolness or difference to his style or whatever. And it's it just, I just enjoyed that. They, they were different. So the choir boys were a little different in their look at the time. So, but, like I said, guys, 1990, 1993, man, like different stuff was coming out and it just, it's a shame what happened. So, so yeah, the first single was seven o'clock. Then they had the ballad. I don't love you anymore, which is starting to get a little bit more play. I think probably now than it even did back in the day because of John Cena's the peacemaker. And like the whole soundtrack to that season, to that show is really good. And uh, the choir boys got a bump with that song uh in that show and then i believe the other single was hey you and i think that was actually the best single that charted uh it was one one of the better ones uh and then i think they also did uh there she is there she goes again which i feel like hey you and there she goes again is kind of like brother sister type song you know like they, they feel the same they're both cool party or party atmosphere just having a fun style uh, song and atmosphere to it and message but I, I think the lyrics are really well written on a lot of these songs like a lot of their catalog like i like all of their catalog but certainly with the debut album there's something special here lyrically musically spike's voice uh, i mean <laughs> and that's the cool thing too like with spike's voice like i prefer a lot of the newer stuff that they do and even to this day they're having a new album come out in like a month and yes i did pre-order that and i'm quite excited and, and spike still sounds pretty much the same today as he did back then now yes grant it's not exactly the same he is a little bit but it still had it's still spike and you know damn you're like damn he's still doing it like he still sounds good i guess good but uh it, it's it's awesome there nonetheless but i would have to say though for me I mean, you do have 12 tracks, which is kind of pushing it. You could probably just throw one off just because, like, it might might be getting slightly long. But at the same time, like, I don't complain. Like, we will get to the sophomore album, the next album, which where I feel is a little way too long. But 12 tracks, I can live with it here. It still sounds good. I still enjoy playing the whole album through. And But for me, I think they hit a home run with the singles off of this album as far as picking the singles off of this album because there are great songs all the way through but uh the singles i think are the best but there is one song at the end the final track take me home i think is one of my favorite choir boys songs in the whole catalog uh as, as a single though i probably wouldn't choose it as a single but it is one of my favorite songs in the choir boys catalog just great way to send you off on the album and just just an awesome song just in general uh a great sing-along choruses too because technically i guess they did have something they had like some kind of like demo album or ep before this and uh it's called from tootin to barkin and i have that as well and it's just like very bare boned type deal and there's some songs that didn't make the album the debut album that i actually really really like off of Tootin, uh, from Tootin to Barkin. And it's worth checking out if you're a fan of the Choir Boys and just didn't get around to it. It's certainly worth checking out. Uh, but certainly the debut album is probably where you want to go first. What up, Maniacs? Hey, it's DK Ravella from the band Kickin' Valentina. You're watching the Crash Course Metal Show. At the time, they were getting gaining traction here. 1990, especially over in England, in Europe, gaining a lot of traction. And, you know, uh, Sharon Osbourne comes in to manage them. And I think she even managed them for the first album, if I'm not mistaken, too. But that's, that's kind of weird to me. Or, like, that, that just sounds strange. I, I never heard that before up until, like, recently. 
and I, I that just kind of blew me away a little bit and i was very strange and then also too bob rock did the second album which generally speaking i don't normally look at the producers uh so when i found this out a couple weeks ago i was like damn i mean that makes sense because bob rock's like everywhere in the hair metal field and era at this time but he produced most of this album but he had some scheduling so like issues so he wasn't able to do the whole album but i mean at the same time there's 14 songs off of the second album here bittersweet and twisted now it didn't do nearly as good in america but it still reached 31 in the top uh uk albums chart for 1993 so you know, it's not not horrible. The singles were uh, Tramps and Thieves, Brother Louie, which is a cover, uh, a cover song. And I think they did a pretty damn good job as far as the cover goes. And then you had like a ballad last time, which you do have 14 songs on this album, though, which is a big downfall for me. I think that's way too many. As much as I love the Choir Boys and their sound and just everything – it's not that they're bad songs. It's just that it's just way too long. I, I don't need 14 songs from okay, even like my other favorite bands like Cinderella. I don't need a 14 song album from Cinderella. 10, no more than 12 is fine. I, I, I think it's just way too long of an album and I think it hurts. You could easily take off uh, one of these songs, King of New York. I, I liked it when I first had this album, but man, it, it just... It's not aging well, and more times than not now, it gets skipped on the iPod, and I might actually just take it off the iPod because like, I can't remember the last time I actually listened to it the whole way through or willingly wanted to listen to it the whole way through. So, But yeah, no, I found I, I ended up getting this album because like, as time went on, even from the debut, like once I started, like after graduating high school and stuff, like I started it really enjoying more of the debut album, a bit of what you fancy. And then I'm like, okay, I need more stuff from Choir Boys here. Now I'm start, I'm, I'm getting it. I'm really digging it now. And then I ended up finding some of the new stuff. But then I also ended up picking up the sophomore album. So now there could have been a time when you asked me, and I would have liked this album more. But as like the months went on, it probably didn't even last a year. It just over, over a couple months, I'm like, you know what? I think I do just dig the debut a lot more it, it just has m more of the uh memorable songs like i said it's not bad songs but it's just the more memorable stuff the more i don't know how to explain it just just there's way more singles and like stuff that you could show people off of the debut than you could off the second album here and i you know i just i, I think it just, it's just way better rounded it's a, just a better album so but nonetheless, but I, I got to give props though too because I would have been ecstatic if I was around in 1993 and this came out in 1993 because obviously 1991, 1992, this stuff started dying off. Grunge came in. This sucks more than anything that I've ever sucked before. And just a whole bunch of different uh, music subgenres came in and took over the mainstream. And this stuff was not cool. People, Bands were changing their sound. And... <laughs> uh, Spike and the boys, they just, you know what they said to that? They said, fuck you. We are going to be doing rock and roll, partying, and we're going to be doing some drinking while we're doing it. And that's just awesome. They kept, this is a just a, a really good follow up to the debut album. You know, nothing's really changed as far as sound wise, lyrically. You know, you still get your classic choir boys here. Don't be scared because it says 1993 on the back. Uh, it's far from 1993. This could have came out in 1990 as well. And you would be like, oh, okay, yeah, that, okay, that sounds like 1990 or whatever. So, but I, I just think the biggest issue for me on this album is some of the songs, songs aren't as strong. You know, like they're good songs, but they're just not as strong. And then there's way too many songs. You got 14 here. So like I said, you could take easily take off King of New York. Don't bite the hand. Uh, just okay. You know, and I another one. So you have like, because King in New York is like a real slow song, ballad style feel. You also had, like I said, Take No Revenge is a ballad. And then you had also 
O2 Baby Just Walk, kind of a ballad as well. But as far as the uh, good songs go, you got uh, Tramps and Thieves, Lead Off, White Trash Blues is fun. Hand Park here is a fun one as well. It, it, there's different stuff on here that I really like. Last Time as well, if I didn't mention that, is like a ballad as too. So you have a good amount of slow stuff here, which I'm a fan of ballads. But when you're talking 14 songs and four of them are ballads, like we're we're getting out a little little out of hand here, if you will. But uh, but not bad songs though either. Not bad songs. You do get a song here though that kind of borderlines country and folk style feel, uh, and that is hates to please. I like that. I like that a lot. Even when I first listened to it, I dug it. You know, it, it's not my favorite song off the album. But I just like the way Spike kind of maneuvers around in that song. The uh, guitar, like just the strings in that song are pretty good. It keeps my attention. I th- I think it's it, it still has variety. For having 14 songs, not one necessarily sounds the same, I will say, which is a plus from having 14 songs. Because usually if you have so many songs, you start to get confused on what song is what, and it, you just lose track and you know your attention span and such. But... Good album, but at the end of the day, when we are in this cell here and we are going head-to-head with which one is better, I just have to go with the debut. The debut is where it's at as far as... Now, I will say when they reformed in 2000, 2001, they put out a slew of good albums since then, since they reformed as well, and well worth checking out, especially if you're a fan of the Choir Boys type sound and everything. I recommend you checking it out because there's I, I prefer some of the newer stuff over the second album, you know, and not, not show, throwing really shade at the second album here. I, you know, if, if people like it better, that's cool. I, I'm not going to give you shit on that because everything that the choir boys did, I'm a fan of. So, like, yeah, I'm not going to fight you for that. You know, I'm not going to fight you for not ha- having the same one A, one B, one C, you know, album. So. But nonetheless, though, some I think I think we gotta go. We gotta go with the debut, no, no question. And like I said, as time went on, this debut just keeps going higher and higher. This debut album, spoiler alert, is a top fifty hair metal album for me. I, it it made it, it made it, and that is, that video will be coming out here soon. So stay tuned for that, guys. And so you know one of the selections already in the top fifty list of mine. So. More than recommendation of checking out a little bit of what you fancy, but check out any, and if you guys like that, check out more of the discography and the new album. I'm quite excited for the new Choir Boys album. Like I said, Spike's still doing it. Got some of the original boys back together as well. That's pretty cool for the new album. And i looking forward to it. And I can't talk enough about the Choir Boys. They are a forgotten band, certainly over here in America, I would say. But... Uh, over in England, they're still, well, they're still, they're still known. You know, they're not. I wouldn't say forgotten over in England, but I haven't gone the, I haven't gone to England lately, so I could be totally wrong on that. So, uh, nonetheless, guys, the debut album, a bit of what you fancy, is the winner here today on Hell in a Cell from 1990. And let me know in the comments what you guys think. Talk to me. Which one do you like better? Which album? Which Choir Boys album do you like better? Because eventually, I will have every single one of the albums, and I will do a Choir Boys album ranking as well. So look out for that. So guys, until next time, thank you for watching the Crash Course Metal Show. Stay out of that collateral damage. And if you guys enjoyed this video, check this one out right here. <laughs>